my name is Chase Pipes, and you're watching a really special episode of Chasing History brought to you by American Digger Magazine and the Smoke Mountain Relic Room, and we are, ah, we're so awesome. We are in the prep lab of the Texas Through Time Museum with museum director Andre Lujan. Andre, hey, thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. Thanks. It's always good to see you, Chase, Dude, so you're welcome always back anytime. Good. Man, same here, brother. Listen, we're here because we've got a very special thing we want to share with you guys. Uh, if some of you people might have already have purchased one of the uh, one of the Permian dig bag sets that we have in the store, if not, you can find it on our on our website. We'll have it. What we want to do is is show you how to basically go through these these bags yeah. and find really cool original Permian stuff. So, so we've got literally a bag of dirt. Right. So what we've got here is we went to our quarry in uh, we went to our quarry in Archer City, and uh, <laughs> we collected uh, raw matrix, which okay. is basically that's the dirt that the fossils are found in. So this is the sediment that is uh, containing the fossils. Okay. Now let me ask you this. All right. So so this is dirt from. Archer, Texas, yep. from the Texas Red Bed. Yeah, from the Texas Red So this Red is the Beds. Permian period. This is a Permian. How, what age is this? So uh, this site is really the Permo-Pennsylvanian boundary. So we're looking at like 290 to 300 million years. Whoa, so yeah. this is way back in time. This is like when stuff first starts to crawl out of the water. Whoa, yeah. so like pre-dinosaur. Oh, way pre-dinosaur. All, for all that stuff. Yeah, this is... So the time that uh, you know Jim Henson was in charge of writing the script for early life on Earth. So everything looks like some kind of bizarre Muppet. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So you we, we've got these uh, these uh, sediment bags set up um, that people can pick up at the shop and they can go through and look for fossils in it. Now one thing I want to state none of these have been th these aren't like you know get the gold bag and you know and there's a pyrite in there and you know where, where they where they quote unquote salt the bags. Right. You haven't salted any of them. Absolutely not. So this, this is, is literally the straight up so original matrix. I'll walk you through the process. Okay. So you visited the site and right. it's an amazing site and you've seen the concentration of bone on the surface is really really intense. So what we do is we shovel up that concentrated dirt on the surface, we take it to our uh, screens, we wash all the clay and other sediment out of it and what we end up with is this clean gravel that is the concentrated bone that you see on the surface when you're out there. So there's a lot of rocks down in here. There's some rocks in there. And when you say gravel, so what, what is this? So you've got bone in here. What are other, some of the other things? So we've there? got bone. We've got Demetrodon spines. We have Xenocanth and Orthocanthus uh, shark teeth. We've got amphibian skull. We've got little claws. I mean, there is literally anything that was alive in the Permian you could find, you could potentially find a fossil in here. That's not, and 100% not salt. Absolutely, 100% so not could, salt. So there could be anything in these bins. Yeah, yeah. That, th see, and that's cool. And that's one thing that you're not gonna get from Texas Third Time, and you're definitely not gonna get from us, is we are not gonna salt groups of stuff. We want you to be the discoverer, no matter how awesome it is, we want to inspire you guys to get out there to learn about this period or any period of history. So, all right, let me ask you this. There's, so other than bone, what are the other rocks in here? Like, like that's not a piece of bone, but right. what is that? So these are just some different types of uh, conglomerate that were formed during the Permian period. Okay. So this site is, um, it's an oxbow lake. So this was a seasonal site. This is, um, it's gonna be, you know, uh, wet seasons, dry seasons. Animals get trapped in there. Uh, so a lot of marine deposits, or a lot of uh, uh, aquatic deposits. Um, what's really interesting is we find that when these, uh, some of these aquatic animals were trapped in these oxbow lakes, uh, as the lakes started to dry up, the predators came in to eat those animals. So we have a lot of predation, and that's why a lot of the stuff at this site is fragmentary, because it's literally been chewed to pieces. That's so cool! So, so that's why when these lakes dry up and, and go down, that's why you've got so, such, so many bones concentrated in one area. And, and one of the most common fossils that you find in this entire mix is these uh, Orthocanthus uh, shark teeth. Oh, that's cool! So here's what we want to do is, is for you guys that are out there 
uh, watching this either on our YouTube channel uh, or there in the store, we want to kind of walk you guys through uh, going through these bags. You know, maybe you picked up the bag at the shop and, you know, nobody wants to get a bag in, of, of really cool, awesome dirt and not know what to do with it. So we're here with Andre and we're going to walk you through some of the cool things that you can find in this dirt. If you haven't uh, picked up one of these bags, if you're just checking it out on our YouTube channel, go to our website, look them up. These are ridiculously affordable. Like you, you can, for a price of a six pack, you can afford this and really get into some cool bones. So let's do this. Let's bring the camera in a little closer and let's see what we got. Okay, so we've got this, this is straight out of the matrix. Yeah. We dumped out a pile here. All right, what kind of stuff can people find in here? Well, uh, we can find the orthocanthus uh, shark teeth. Okay. And uh, we find their spines also. Okay. Uh, so these are basically going to be um, the predatory animal of the water. There's also some paleoniscid fish scales that we might be able to find in here. But the sharks really are the predominant fossil that we find in this mix. And uh, they seem to be kind of the base of the food chain for some of the other predatory animals like Dimetrodon and some of the uh, large amphibians like Edops and Eriops. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. So we're going to find their teeth. Uh, we're going to find their spines, and then we're going to find some reptile and amphibian fossils nice. as well. One thing that you guys came up with that I think is awesome is that you, everybody who gets one of these things, you're not just going to be, oh, boom, here's a pile of dirt, good luck. Right. <laughs> There's going to be a great identification card that goes with this, so you're going to know what kind of fossils can be found in this, and you can match up you know, the look of the fossil with what is in the picture. So let's kind of dive in and see see what we can find. So for people who are looking at this, what are some of the things that they're going to look for to know that it's a fossil or it's a rock? So probably the easiest thing is going to be, uh, is it shiny, right? Most rocks aren't shiny, and especially okay. when you look at this stuff. So a rock looks like a rock. It's kind of granular. Okay. It's kind of so, dull. So this is something that's just rock, not shiny. Right. Okay. Yeah. So some of that conglomerate, though, can contain fossils. But we're going to just jump right in, and uh, you know, here, here we have one of these shark teeth. So I see some light reflecting off of that. Oh, yeah, cool! Yeah, that, that is a that is an orthocanthus uh, shark tooth right there. That's um, awesome. So it looks like yeah, it's it, it looks like a buck tooth shark. Yeah, it's a buck tooth shark. That's a very good way to put it. You no, know? really? No, it's it's not <laughs> called a buck tooth shark. But I think that's a great way to put it because these has these big forked. Uh, teeth, you know, with these twin cusps. Okay. And sometimes they have some little small cusps in there as well. Oh, that's so cool. But can you imagine a mouthful of these, you know, cusp, double cusp teeth? Yeah. It, it's really hard to chew. So that's an example. It's not a traditional looking shark tooth, but it's a shark tooth. Absolutely. That's cool. Okay. What else kind of stuff do we have? All right. Here? So this is a, a nice flat piece of bone here. This looks like it's a uh, part of a skull. So this is, uh, this is uh, oh. part of a skull there. So what kind of a species would this be? Um, so I'm going to uh, probably just lump that with reptile because the amphibian skulls are heavily textured. So they're gonna be very rugose, kind of looking like a, like an alligator or crocodile skull. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so this is gonna be some type of amphibian skull. Like what? what this is, is probably reptile. Or reptile. Yeah, because yeah. it's smooth. And okay. the reptile skulls are, are more smooth and they have less uh, texture. What kind of popular or common species could this be a skull from? Well, the most common reptile that we find in there is, uh, well, not a true reptile, synapsid is Dimetrodon. So. Oh, cool! Yeah. It has to be a, Dem a Dimetrodon. Yeah, piece. yeah, it could. That's awesome. See, there's cool stuff yes, in these. Very that's cool, cool stuff. All right. So we know rocks look like rocks, and we know that other bones are going to have a particular texture. So now, there you go. You've got another orthocanthus. So that's another another orthocanthus. So that's mm -hmm. the, that's our buck tooth shark right. guy. Okay. All right. What else do we have in here? Um, so we've got some rib fragments and some limb sections. So these little pieces of splintered stuff that looks like petrified wood. Mm -hmm. That's actually bone. So these are from oh. splintered bones that were probably chomped on by a Dimetrodon or something else, some large predator. And do you find that that for the majority of these fossils in here that they're they're they've been predated on, they've At, been eaten on, chewed on? Really, the only things that we find whole are the little tiny things like teeth, uh, claws, and toes. Anything that could be chewed up has been chewed up. That's so cool. So not only is this like really cool old. Uh, Permian period bones, but these are bones that have been gnawed on by other Permian critters. That's so cool. Yeah, that's dude. very cool. That's, that's awesome. Cool. Uh, let's see if we can't find a piece of skull. Here's a nice rib fragment right there. Nice Ooh. shiny bone. 
Wow, yeah, that is a great piece. And that's the rib to, is, is it, uh, so for some of the smaller stuff, can you kind of tell what species it is? Or when it gets like this size, it's pretty difficult. Yeah, when, you, when it gets that size, it's pretty difficult. Okay, so. all right. Uh, this is a really cool thing. It looks like a rock, but it's not. If you look closely, um, it's got some, it's really smooth. You know, it mm -hmm. looks, uh, it looks like uh, it was almost cast or something like that. All the rest of these rocks are, are rough and angular. Mm -hmm. That's very smooth. That is part of an Edops uh, Craig Eye armor. So Edops Whoa. is this giant salamander, you know, that got up to like 10 feet long. Okay. Yeah, no. So you got a 10, a 10 foot, foot salamander, salamander covered in chain mail body armor. Uh, these, these ossicles, these dermal ossicles. So this is like a, um, a calcified, a skin cell, basically. So this would look like a giant Gila monster. That's so cool! Yeah. That's nuts! A ten, so it's a 10 foot tall giant ancient salamander well, armor. they're pretty low profile, so maybe only 20 or so inches off the ground, but, but uh, up to 10 feet long. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter how low to the ground you are. If you've got a 10-foot thing waddling towards you right. with chain mail With chain armor, mail, you know, with yeah, chain mail you're, armor. You're, you're skidooting. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Uh, oh. Let's see what else we got in here. Oh, this is great. Look at that. There is a toe bone. Oh, no. Yep, that is a whole, so this is one of the few fossils that we do find that are complete. No, that's um, so because cool. Because the hands and feet uh, are easy to, to, to chomp off, and, and, you know, there's not a lot of meat there, so those usually get cast to the side. That's so cool. And, and I just want to stress again, he's not salting this. We didn't salt this for you guys, the camera. We literally came up with this whole idea like an hour ago. Uh, and we wanted to sit down and interview you while we were interview him while we had the chance and show you how this goes and to to literally pull a toe Like a nice toe out of something. We just grabbed. I mean, this is the same kind of stuff that these folks are gonna be getting It's unsorted uncalled and there's no telling what kind of cool stuff is gonna be in yeah, there. Yeah So when we are uh, digging this stuff at the site we have um there's a, a cattle stock pond right right there, and we are literally, it's a huge operation. We're taking buckets to the screens, we're washing it with uh, pressurized water, we're drying it on a tarp, we're scooping it up, we're putting it in sandbags. So they're, they're, we can barely keep pace with the processing of the material. There's no time to, to skim and pick or, you know, add anything that wasn't there. I mean, well, and here's the thing is, is that it really wouldn't be cost effective for you to sit down and go through every single, all of this material that right. you have and pull out this little stuff. Uh, it, exactly, and you know, it's, it's really about, as you well know, the site is exposed, it's eroding, there's this terrible stuff called grass that's trying to grow on our fossils. And Green so stuff. It, it's really a race against time. You know, every time we're out there, we have to be as, um, efficient as we possibly can be with the time that we have. Well, let's talk about that for a second because I think that's important to get across to everybody is is that people don't understand that, that where fossils are found, fossils aren't rare, they're quite common, and that there is literally a race against Mother Nature if you will, to save these fossils before the freeze thaw destroys them. So these fossils, they're already pretty broken up, uh, but something like this toe, how much longer would it last on the surface? A year? Yeah, maybe a year or two at the most. Before, before it's destroyed. Right, yeah, I mean, UV rays break down everything. If you've ever left anything out in the sun, it fades or it corrodes or, you know, it starts to break down wood. Yeah. You know, just sunlight will destroy wood. Yeah. Uh, fossils are no different, you know. And if they're exposed to extreme temperature swings, freeze thaw, if there's any moisture in them and, the, and a hard freeze comes like we had here uh, last February here mm -hmm. in Texas, an incredibly hard freeze. Uh, a lot of these rocks and fossils will just explode. And the next time it rains, all those little pieces, pieces are washed are away. And here's the thing too, is, is you, you guys are out there digging for your museum. So anything that's important to science that you find out there is going to go to science. Yes, absolutely. So we've, we've found some significant discoveries, uh, but the vast majority of this stuff is uh, it's a channel deposit, it's disarticulated, uh, it's lost a lot of its original context, and the most important information that we can glean from these gravel bars of fossils in this ancient river system is uh, statistical appearance of different types of fossils. So we can say, wow, you know, we find this fossil more than we find that fossil. And we can kind of get an idea of what the structure of the ecosystem look like. 
you know, who was the top dog, who was the food, you know, who was the predator, who was the prey sort of thing. And that's something that you don't need the entire river channel to tell that story. Once we collect the fossil, that data, um, once, <laughs> once, we, once we collect the data of, you know, the statistical data of the fossil, uh, really the fossil becomes irrelevant. At gotcha. that point. It's, it's all about all, the information. It's all about the information. Yeah. So this stuff is a perfect candidate for novices, for amateurs, for beginner collectors, for people like these guys out there, you know, who are looking to get into and learn and learn how to identify and understand this period. Yes. Uh, so we teach a class here at Texas Your Time called Premium Playground. We use this material because it's a great example to teach people how to start to recognize or key in on different shapes, textures, and colors to help them become better fossil hunters. And uh, it's a really fun way to, you know, just st start the hobby. Yeah. And I mean, you don't have to, you know, trudge all the way out to the, you know, the, the red beds of Texas if you, you know, don't have time or can't afford the trip or don't know what to do. This is a great way to get you started into the world of fossil collecting because we're literally bringing the site to you <laughs> for you to go through and hunt. So we put out a couple of fossils. I want to look through and show us some things that aren't fossils okay. and explain to us why they aren't. Great. So, you know, we've recognized, we've looked at some of the shapes that are pretty diagnostic mm -hmm. fossils. That is just a rock. Okay. And so got that. it's just a rock because I mean, look at it. It's it's a sandstone. It's pretty clear. You can feel it. It feels like sandpaper. Um, stuff from the earth uh, kind of has a, a cold feel to it. It doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't, it's, it's just got a different feel. Okay. But the sandstone, it's brittle. Uh, you can look inside of it. You can see that sandstone gr uh, structure. That's just a rock. Okay. This is some of that conglomerate that I was telling you about. Now, what is that conglomerate made So, of? this conglomerate is uh, debris. This conglomerate is debris from the river channel, and it could be pebbles, it could be little clay clasts, it could be other sediment that has uh, solidified over time. Okay. It's important to look at these little nodules because sometimes they actually contain fossils. Really? So yes. as, as these, these concretions are forming, they can, you know, kind of like Play-Doh picking up a rock, they can pick up a fossil. Right. So. You've been in the Badlands. You've collected fossils out there in the Hell Creek and the Lance Creek. Have you ever seen the armored mud balls? The armored mud balls. So this is a ball of clay that washes down off one of the buttes and it rolls oh, across yeah, yeah, the yeah, prairie yeah. and it picks up all those rocks and it yeah. actually, and it becomes this new thing. Yeah. Uh, so this this has been happening in the geologic um, column forever. As long as there's been sediment eroding, things like that have been happening. That's so awesome. So that's another one of the things that that drives these. So. Uh, we've got some more sandstone. Um, That's the sandstone. These yeah. are our conglomerates. Yes. Okay. So the, the conglomerate has a really um, porous look and feel to it. So this almost looks like a, a like a white pumice. Okay. Yeah, it does. It, it, it looks it, like a volcanic pumice. Yeah, and, it, and it's really light. It's light. Yeah, yeah. it's really light. Yeah. So some of this darker stuff can be the conglomerate too. Now you see these little light colored specks in there? Mm -hmm. Those are actually fossils. Oh, cool. And uh, if you if you get a really nice piece of the conglomerate and mm -hmm. it's dark like that, it, you get good contrast. Um, sometimes you can see little tiny shark teeth. Oh, I'm talking awesome. like one millimeter. So this would be a good a good candidate for people to look through with a microscope. Yeah, or you with a little mic, mic hand lens. Lines. Oh, look at this shark tooth right here. Absolutely pristine. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That is a killer tooth. Man, you can really see why I call him a buck tooth shark. <laughs> That's cool. We'll put that over there. That's so let's awesome. see. Okay, here's a little piece of amphibian skull. Remember I was saying they resemble an alligator or crocodile yes. skull? Yes, so we've yes, got yes. those uh, the rugose texture on there. Oh, that's cool. That's perfect. So you've got the smooth the smooth one is the uh, is the reptile skull. Right. And the textured one is the uh, amphibian skull. Absolutely, yep. That's cool. That is really cool. All right. This, this is a great opportunity for a lot of you guys out there to get started, you know, collecting fossils and learning about fossils. You know, this is stuff that, you know, all the science that can be done is already done. These fossils are eroding and are being destroyed by the freeze thaw. It was a genius idea for Andre to bag this stuff up 
and get it into hands like us at the Relic Room to offer it to you guys at a really, really, really affordable price. And I thank you for that. Absolutely. Because, I mean, th this is... Th th I. I, I can't believe how affordable this is going to be. And I'm really excited about that. I'm excited for all of you to find some really cool stuff because there is cool stuff in in these things. Is there anything else about these bags or groups that you want to talk about or that we didn't include? Well, um, we put together a wonderful identification card yes. um, that we're going to be able to... Uh, to provide to everybody. So this has just got some great photography. Yeah, we'll zoom in on this here in a second. But this is this is a great ID card and it's got all kinds of pictures on it. Right, it covers all the most common fossils um, that you're gonna find, the, the teeth, the spines, the claws, the skull fragments and things like that. So uh, any of your finds you should be able to easily identify with this. Um, but then if there's something you can't identify, uh, begin, you know, so begins your, your internet sleuth adventure. Uh, <laughs> there are some great resources out there, some great identification books. And if you just keep pulling that thread, uh, before you know it, you're going to be a paleontologist in the field with your head down, uh, making original finds of your yes. own. Yes. So on, uh, if people want, where, where's some good resources online for people to go to if they find something that's not on the card? Uh, there's an internet group called, uh, a chat room called the Fossil Forum. It's an excellent resource. Lots of very... On uh, Facebook? Uh, uh, that's, that's out there on the internet. Okay. Um, there is a Texas Rock and Fossil group. Um, you know, it, a, lot, a lot of these uh, fossil groups that are local to your area or find one that is relevant to the type of fossil that you're hunting. That's so awesome. There, if, if there is a, if you collect anything, if you're into anything, there is a group on the internet that can help you find more information about it. Oh, so. for sure. And just again, one more time, what period are, are these fossils from? So and this what? is what uh, formation so this is very very early permian and uh, this is going to be uh, moran admiral formation so this is pennsylvanian permian boundary uh, we're looking at like 290 to 300 million years old that's 290 to 300 million year old fossils this is awesome dude man i cannot thank you enough for having us out. If yeah. people want to reach out to you or learn more about the museum, where can they find some more information? Uh, well, you can visit our Facebook page. Uh, we're at Texas Through Time. And uh, also we have a website and that's going to be texasthroughtime.org. Uh, you can call the museum at 254-262-DINO. That's 3466. And uh, you're always welcome to stop by. We're in Hillsboro, Texas at 110 North Waco Street. This is an incredible museum and is worth making the stop to check it out. These guys are phenomenal. They care about what they do. They love what they do. But more importantly, they care about sharing the information with you guys. If you are you or anybody is interested in some of these sets, you can pick them up through our website, therelicroom.com, or swing in the store in East Tennessee to check them out. We are going, we have filmed an episode with Andre a little while ago about this formation and hunting these fossils and that that episode took place on the site that these fossils were found. So if you'll hang on for a second, we're going to cut to that episode and you guys can continue watching and continue the, your education about the fossils from the Permian and the Texas Red Bed. So remember guys, history rocks. about this forever yeah i know it's exciting having andre you. andre's out here he's got a permian site now the permian period is this is this is your very this is the this is the very first time the animals get out on out of water and start walking around on land this is the very first time that you have animals and, and reptiles out you know working around on the surface so this is this is kind of like the, the oldest life tell me about this period of history oh, man this is uh Really where we're at is the Pennsylvanian Permian boundary. So Pennsylvanians, the crinoids and the trilobites and all these other little invertebrates and that dominate the oceans. Uh, but once it, you transition to the Permian, like you said, you have this explosion of life on land with uh, Demetrodons and, and uh, daphosaurs and, and big amphibians that are like six and eight feet long. So the, the land really gets, uh, life really gets diverse on land. Well, th this is kind of like a, 
kind of like the very first time when, you know, you, we, we have a, an environment and an ecosystem similar to what we have today, you know, in terms of just a life model. You know, you've got life in the rivers, life in the oceans, sure. life on land. You've got all that thing going on. What, what's, what period of history is this? I mean, how many millions of years are we talking about? So we're talking, uh, this transition is probably about, puts us about 299 to 300 million years ago. No, dude, that is yeah. awesome. That is yeah. insanely back in time it it's is crazy. it is and especially when you consider that some of these animals are so complex they're more uh they're more closely related to animals today than animals you know in the 150 million years in between how so well the uh, per, uh the synapsids the pelicosaurs dimetrodons and things like that those are considered mammal-like reptiles now I've heard that expression. Yeah. What what is a mammal-like reptile? So a mammal-like reptile is it's an animal called a synapsid. But uh, the distinctions are the differentiated teeth, and dimetrodon uh, means differentiated teeth. Okay. So they have different positions for different things. And if you think about dinosaurs, what do they have? Just a mouthful of sharp teeth. Right. You know, a lot of things like that. Sharks as well. Uh, then they have a con complex shoulder girdle which is very similar to our sternum and clavicles that we have today. Okay, so you're saying that the bone structure of these animals is what makes it a mammal-like. You know, Absolutely. how the teeth are set up, how their bodies are set up, very right. much like, like mammals as opposed to the reptiles in which the dinosaurs all come from. Absolutely. Now, 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 this is pre-dinosaur, this period that we're at. There, 100 million there are years no, before dinosaurs. Okay, so they, we, there are no dinosaurs None. roaming around. Okay, and this is even further between uh, dinosaurs and, 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 and us than it is between dinosaurs and them, right? Absolutely. So I mean, this is this is way way back in time. Way. So we're closer to dinosaurs than than these guys. Are. Absolutely. God, that's nuts, yeah. man. That deep time, man. When you get into this deep time stuff and you think about it, you know, there's more time between us and you know a dinosaur than there is between these guys and dinosaurs. I mean, that's just. God, that's insane, that is insane, dude. It is insane. So, you know, how do you find a site like this? I mean, I mean, we get this beautiful lake. We've got these hills, you know. But this, this was like the only hill we had going on, coming into this site. I mean, it was, it was flat and scrubby. And yeah. how, how do sites like this get found? Well, I mean, it starts with geological survey maps. You know, okay. if you can't, if you, if the formations that have the fossils in them that you're looking for are not in a certain area, don't waste your time. You know, okay. so we start there. So and geological survey maps. When when were those done? Uh, really, about the turn of the century. Okay, I mean, so uh, through the nineteen, uh, through you know the early nineteen hundreds to present, uh, geologists all around the world and in, in the United States have been uh, compiling these maps with detailed drawings and uh, you know of where formations are. And if you want to find a Cretaceous marine formation, there's a glossary or an index that you can use to find a color coded map. To uh, to search those out. Okay, so are th and these maps are available anywhere. Absolutely, right? in Texas you can get okay. them from UT Austin, and they're available for free online now from USGS. So that's what. So you know you would go to like let's say UT Austin and say I want to look at your geological survey maps for this area. Absolutely, and you just start looking through. Yeah. So Texas is broken up into like I think it's fifty something sheets, and those contain multiple counties. Um, you can buy a copy or you can use it free online at usgs.com. But uh, yeah, you start with those and you kind of zero in. What's great about the maps is they have the major highways superimposed over the tops of the formation. So oh, you that's say, cool. Man, if I take I-20 West out to yeah. X County, I can find these Permian exposures. Uh, and then from there, it's a matter of getting permission to walk on the land and really starting to read the formations and look for indicators that there's going to be a concentration of fossils. Okay. Well, I, you, you said something that's hugely important too is, is, you know, is getting permission from the landowner to come out here and to do these, to, 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 to walk on this land and, 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 and to look for these fossils. And yeah. I'm sure that's, that's hugely important to what Absolutely. you Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Texas is very unique in the sense that uh, for a state its size, there's no public lands. You know? Really? Oh yeah. We've no got joke. some national grasslands and some state lands that are uh, hunting areas, but we don't have huge swaths of public lands like in you know Montana, Wyoming, right, and stuff like right. that. So you know you get on the map, you're on the interstate, you're like, God, dude, there's stuff over there, and yes. so you like pull out, you're like, where's the ranch guy's house? You go punt the ranch <laughs> guy, knock on the door, be like, dude, there's 300 million year old fossils on your property. I saw it on the USGS map. Can I please go walk around Absolutely. and look for this stuff? And then the guy's like, yeah, dude, you, I don't care. Go for it. Yes know? or no. So yeah. Something like that. Is that pretty, pretty much how it goes Pretty down. much how it goes, yeah. That's so, 
God, it's so cool, man. So, so that goes down. You go out here and you start hunting. Now, what when you're out walking? I mean, you know, this isn't like you know, like a hundred acre ranch. I mean, well, these these are thousands and thousands right. of acres. So you're walking around and you're looking for soil layer. What 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 are you looking for? Absolutely. So when you start to see really distinct changes in in uh, geology, you yeah. know, really tightly colored bands and things like that or changes in the types of gravel that are deposited you know that there was some kind of event that caused that okay otherwise it's going to be consistent and it's going to be very thick okay you know those are those are slow time depositions you know you got a spot here we can go check out where we can show everybody what you're talking about absolutely about players? yeah all right got you guys want to go come on this is gonna be fun come on let's go all right, so we're walking around looking for places like this, and and you know how, how do you know what what to look for? I mean, to me, you know, you, you can kind of see color differences in the soil, but but yes. not entirely. So what's this soil that we're looking for? All right, so all this red dirt out here in the Permian right. Basin uh, is is it's all Permian formation. So what we're looking for is lighter colored soils that indicate the presence of water. Okay, where there's water, there's life. Okay, so 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 the dirt we're on here, this. This stuff right here, yep. this is Permian dirt. Yep, All right, so all. we're in the we're in the dirt of the period. So what we need to look for is we need to look for places where water existed within this dirt. Absolutely. Basically. Okay, and so because the water is different than the land, it's going to be a different color. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So what color are we looking for? Well, we're looking for like a light color. Any any lighter color than the red, you know, yellows okay. or greens or whites. So anything like that. Now, what's what, what is it within the water that causes that color difference? I think it's just the decomposition. Of decomposition of things in the water, of plants and right. animals and whatever. The soil oxidized, got a lot of iron okay. content. So we've got some light colored. Oh, right, right. There. yeah, right so there. So that right there is like what we're. God. Yeah, we need to check it yeah. out. Ah, come on, let's go. Okay, so where we've got this hill outcropping, this is where we've got the exposure of, you know, like part of a bank or something like that, or, yes. or, or the 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 shore of a of a little lake or something. Yes. Okay. So you find bands like this that's got these different colors. And what's cool, God, you know what's cool about this? So so we've got this this dry land down here. We've got this little band of water. Looks like some more of just the regular red dirt than another band of water uh, water. Are these like different layers of that water source's life? Or is Absolutely. That so this could be seasonal. God, you know, this could so have been cool. Uh, and the fact that we don't see more could indicate that uh, you know there was just two extremely wet times yeah. in between a, a dry time. And uh, who knows, this deposit could be thicker as it goes into the hill, but yeah. this is exactly what we're looking for, Chase. Okay. But we need more. Okay. You know, we need more. And what we want to what we want to find when we find uh, an exposure like this is little fragments of bone or anything fragments that tells us that there out. is fossils in this deposit. Okay. Yep. But what's cool about this is 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 do, this this is like chapters in a book. Yes. You know, you've got all this history of just, you know, the plants doing their thing, being plants, and all of a sudden this big monsoon or whatever comes in and creates this layer. Yes. And then you've either got a couple hundred or a couple thousand years goes by, plants are doing their thing, hanging out, high-fiving each other, and then all of a sudden, you've got another layer of this water coming in. Right. I mean, this is like chapters in a book. That's, that's great. God, that's what's awesome about it. So you look for these layers in the soil, and you're going to either you look for the little bone, right? and if you find the little bone, what do you do next? Do you just hammer at it? Well, I mean, it all depends, you know, we want to find something in situ, right? So we okay. want to find, if we find the evidence of bones in the formation, then we want to try to find uh, bones actually stuck in the dirt that we're looking at. Then we know, okay, this is the right place, the right time situation. Uh, in situations like that, then we start digging because that's where you can find the little critters laid out. And right, yeah. Smiling at you. Ah! I didn't yeah. make it. I didn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So, step, man, there's a lot of work to do this because you know, you've got step one. Step one, you've got to get out the map, break out the maps. Step two, get on the highway, hunt, hunt for where the spot you find the maps are. All right. Step three, go knock on the door and hope that the dude's cool. Step four, get out here and walk this area and look for layers like this that you can. And then step four is is looking for the fossils fossils coming out collecting out on the surface yeah so step four is all right so we're on step four now so let's do let's go like let's go find a spot where some little bones are let's are do right. it you guys guys you guys want to come god i know it chase this is what we're talking about this is what we're talking about right here uh, all of these little fragments coming out of this lighter colored clay that we okay. talked about earlier yeah 
there is little chips of bone. Look at this tooth right here. Oh no yeah. way, dude, that's so, so cool. This is a freshwater shark called no. Xenocanthus. Okay, no, no, hold on. So there's sharks in the Permian also. Yeah. No. Yeah. See, I thought this was just like no. reptiles no, and like man. little goofy looking guys wandering well, around. These, but you've got sharks going on too. These are pretty goofy looking sharks. So let's see God, if we can pop so this cool. tooth Come out. here, look at this, look at this, look at this. Look okay, at this. it's one nice cusp. But no it should way. have another cusp over here, so it's like a peace sign. So you said goofy little amphibians. Yeah. Well, this is a goofy little buck tooth shark. I mean, <laughs> it had a but it had a mouthful of forked teeth. Tell me how you awesome, chew like that. Dude. Holy crap! That's man. cool. Whoa! Dude, look at nice. this, man. This is okay. a lungfish tooth right here. All right, now what's oh lungfish? Lungfish. So these, no, the first guys fish yes, walking out. Yes. Around. These fish. These are no fish that could way. breathe. They could live in little That's burrows. So that, cool. That is really special. All right, hold on. Let's not lose our shark tooth, okay. dude. That's freaking awesome, so, man. Okay, we're so, up so to So all this, now what about pieces like, uh, like that? That is a part of an amphibian skull. Ah, that's so cool. Yes. No way. Dude, yeah. this whole thing is just It's loaded. With so this is what I was talking about. Okay. When you find the bone, you're in, in the bone. This, and in this light-colored right. layer. This, okay. This is a... Uh, you know, this is indication that this was a wet environment, that yeah. it was a healthy, diverse yeah. environment. So this is where the animals are going to be, the predators and prey. Wow, okay. look at this, Chase. Look at this perfect little shark tooth right no. here. Let me just put that on the end of my finger. Dude, look. that is insane. God, it's so small. It is, yeah. Well, oh, there's another one right there's there. There's another one. Yeah, look at that. No, shoot. This is, dude, holy yeah. crap, And man. it just keeps going. Look, there's another little tooth right there. Oh, no, Chase. You know oh, what that, that is? No, what? Dude, that is a claw, man. No! Yes! Seriously? Yeah. God, that is an so Eriops claw. That is a claw, man, to an amphibian. Dude, this is insane. Yeah. No, we were, okay, all right, hold on. Dude, this is hilarious because we were kind of up, you know, regular people height looking around, looking for stuff. I'm like, all right, there's a couple bones here. We'll we'll stop and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this. But as soon as we hit the ground, dude, yeah. we found all this awesome yeah. stuff. That's so nuts. You have to get down. This is not, um, you know, hunting from a four-wheeler. Right. You really got to get down and look get, at the ground. Get down stripped. And now why, what now, all this stuff, this is really small stuff. Is it just like the small species that we're finding or were the primary most of the species in this period were small? In this period, they were small. Okay. So Demetrodon milleri, which uh, you saw the skeleton that we had at the Tucson Fossil and Miller yeah, Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It came from this quarry. No, that yeah. came from here? So it's okay. the oldest species of Demetrodon, but it's also one of the smallest. So, okay. uh, so, so all Demetrodon, that's those guys with the sails on their back that yes. you see in like, you know, you, you see like, you know, the maps of the dinosaurs and then, you know, you, you see all the different species then it, and then you go like way back before the dinosaurs and then there's this like little lizard dude with a sail on its back. That's Demetrodon. Just think Spinosaurus 150 million years before dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There you yeah. go. That'll work. God, it's so cool. So we've got all these smaller species, and that species was one that came out of out of this quarry here. This quarry, yeah. So so here's what you've done is is you've walked around, you've identified a spot where we've got fossils like this. God, this is so nuts, dude. Yeah. I didn't expect we'd find this. <laughs> and I mean, look, there's look, in situ still sitting there. Yep. There's another bone there. Look, we got more bone up here. We've got bone here. I mean, dude, this whole place is freaking littered with stuff, man. This is this is insane. Yeah. Look, that's really cool. Look at that. It, now that's another skull section. Yes, that is. Look, just barely eroding out of the rock. That's so cool, dude. This is insane. This is look, yeah, see? Now, all right, now we've got these two bones close together. Could that be part of the same species? It could. And and so this is kind of what we're doing. We're saving the fossils because this could have been a complete skull a okay. hundred years ago. Right. You know? And as these things erode out, freeze and thaw, freeze and thaw, they're breaking up. And if you notice, <clears throat> most everything here is shattered into little tiny pieces right. and disarticulated. Uh, but when we start digging into the ground, we find a lot more articulated stuff. Okay. So, so, but you just brought out a, brought up a really important point. So, you know, no matter, look, here's another piece right here. Yeah. Here's three pieces that are roughly in the same area. Oh, so these go. are all, all skull sections that are roughly... This is part of the jaw. Oh, no, that's a tooth socket? Yep, that's a tooth no, socket. No, that's cool. 
Here's what nature's doing, and this is what's really important what Andre's doing, and, and fossil collectors like him, is, is nature's doing its thing. All right, Erosion hasn't stopped. The forces of geology hasn't stopped at all. So, you know, this, this, this rock is turning back into dirt. These hillsides are eroding, and what's happening is, is being exposed are fossils like this. All right, look how big Texas is. You can't cover on one little spot. You can't cover all Texas and find all the fossils out there. But the fossils are everywhere. They are. You know? So, you know, uh, so it's important to come out here and collect this stuff before it turns back into dirt. Because what's going to happen in another hundred years to these pieces right here? They'll, they'll, they'll turn, be gone. Yeah, they'll, they'll be, be gone. dirt. They'll be totally, yeah. totally turned back into dirt. Absolutely. And see, that's, that, that's the big crime, really, is letting this stuff turn back into dirt. So, I mean, what you guys do, what you do, dude, that's hugely awesome and important. You know, because you come out here and you identify the spots, you get down and you save the fossils before they get eroded away and the evidence is totally gone. Absolutely, you know? yeah. There's a lot of new things that have been discovered uh, in these formations that science would never have known about had it not been for avocational, you know, right. weekend paleontologists out here doing their thing and recognizing when something's important uh, that it should be exposed to science. Um, but there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of common fossils out there like the shark teeth. I mean, you'll find a thousand shark teeth here today. Right. Uh, those are by no means rare. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a fun hobby to come out here and pick them up. Yeah. Right? And, and what you were saying too is, you know, there, you come out here in a, in a day or two and find, you know, a couple thousand teeth, you know, I mean, the, the, these, these fossils aren't that rare once you know where to start looking. For, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and so it's, it's, so that means it's, it's, and science only needs one specimen. You don't need a thousand shark teeth of the same species in order to understand it but these fossils can do so much good in somebody's in somebody that that's that's an amateur out here collecting that that can inspire a whole new generation yes. of fossil collecting and it, that's what's cool and it does yeah. and it does dude, yeah. oh, dude i'm stoked yeah. man this is awesome all right Chase. i didn't think we were gonna find all this oh, stuff we're just getting dude, this started is nuts. okay so you go out you walk around you find this you find the layer with the gray and there's a layer up there. You were talking about the purple a little earlier. How? Yes. Okay. So so we've got the swing in, and we've got this red layer that that's just the basic ground layer. And right. then you've got so you're looking for anything that's discolored from that red layer. Right. So the so, re so the red is basically the baseline, like you stated. Right. And any extreme on that, the darker colors, more richer colors, lighter colors, uh, okay. the addition of any kind of gravels or anything like that is really gonna indicate the presence of the fossils that you're looking for. Okay. So all of these fossils right here are eroding from right at the top of this hill where there's that deep, rich purple color. That purple color. Yeah. Okay. So, and that purple color is also evidence of a lake as well, or of water, or swamp, or what have you. Yes. Would, of the conditions that would per perpetuate uh, uh, things being fossil. Yes. Okay. Cool. So it's not just this this chalky layer, but it's also the purple. Basically, any layer other than red. Other you're than gonna, red. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. So any layer other than red, you're going to find stuff. Yes. All right. So once you find a layer like that, what's your next move? What's your next step? And you you, you collect the stuff up. I can't believe you found this stuff. Dude, this is so. <laughs> Oh, well, you nuts, found a claw, man. man. I'm dude, like, uh, that's nuts. Yeah, that that's is. That's so cool, dude. That's awesome. Look, it's little. Now, God, it's so cool. You're going to find a handful of toes, and you might just be able to put together a hand today. So. Oh, that'd be so cool, dude. Yeah. This is this is nuts, man. So the next step, Chase, yeah. is going to be, let's, let's find... Um, Let's go up into the quarry where okay. we've been digging and see if we can find any exposed limb bones or anything like that that would indicate a skeleton. And let's poke around and see what we can find. Ah, dude, God, thank you so much You're for welcome. having us out, dude. Yeah. This is awesome. Ah! Come on, let's go. This will be fun. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, this is awesome. Uh, seriously, though, if you, if you belly crawl in there. All right, so we had to stop stop for just one second because we got we got looking around and started finding when we got close to the dirt we started finding all this cool stuff and we thought we'd have you guys along while we were just looking around just seeing what we can find so what what what, what do we got here that we found right here so, so what species we got going on this is a, another xenocanth shark tooth okay. you can see there with the split cusp um this is a toe bone of an amphibian called archeria so archeria was um it was just this cool little critter it has these uh, nice little round vertebrae. We like to call them Archerios, but this little toe bone, you know, he would have hand that he would have had a hand that looks very similar to yours and eyes. Yeah. Um, and uh, you just found one of these claws. Yeah. You, oh, you that just was found one of, the, one of okay. his claws. Yeah. Hold on. Let me. Yeah. Pull that out. Let me dig that. 
dig that back out. We didn't plan this shot. We're just, you know, we, we just thought it'd be cool to show you guys everything we've been picking up. Oh, this is so cool. I can't believe how many little things we're finding. Oh yeah, this is this, this is, is awesome. Wow, Chase, you picked up quite the pocket full of fossils. Oh there. yeah, that claw. Okay. Oh yeah. So that claw goes with that guy right, right there. So, so this toe may be a little bit oversized, but you can see there if we get- No, it's so <laughs> cool, dude. That looks so awesome, yeah. man. That's insane. Yep. That's <clears throat> so freaking nuts. Okay. Oh, that's cool. All right. So what did this guy look like? What did he so do? He what looked like he... a little salamander, you know? Okay. And he, uh, he had pretty sharp teeth and a skull about this long. Okay. Um, and he would- so about a seven inch, eight inch, 12 inch skull? Right. Yeah. yeah. About okay. a 12 inch skull, 12 inch you know, skull. maximum size. And they're about four or five feet long. Okay. Um, they lived in the water, but they were probably eight fish and anything else that was smaller than them. Okay, you know, cool. Pretty aggressive little guys. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. They, and uh, but they weren't on the top of the food chain. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there was an amphibian that ate this guy for breakfast, and uh, what you found here, Chase, this little uh, dermal ossicle or osteoderm, is a bony armor plate that goes on an amphibian called Edops. No. And Edops was the uh, well, Doctor Romer called him Grand Granddaddy Bumps. Grandpa bumps because he 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 was covered in these in these little armor scutes and had these big knots on his skull that looked like biscuits. No way. Yeah. So, so this so, guy so got ten been... or twelve feet long. No way. And yeah. and his whole body would be nothing but these little yes, scoops. Studded. All yeah. Like it. like a Gila monster, just covered in these little these armor little bitty beads. armored scoops. And yeah. that dude ate that dude for breakfast. Oh yeah. God, it's so oh, yeah. cool, man. So we just picked up a piece of of uh, Demetrodon spine here too. So this okay. is part of the fin or the sail back on those reptiles. Oh, that's so cool! So, all right, so like the dude we were talking, the dude we were talking about with the sail. Yeah. that's one of the bones of its of of the sail. Absolutely. That's so cool, man. God, there's so many. Let's look. Let's see what. So many little else. things. So many little things when you get down here and hunker on the ground, man. It's insane. Like there's a little, there's a little bone of something. What's that guy? Wow. This actually. This looks like part of a uh, clavicle of, a, of an amphibian, so a collarbone. Oh, no way. Yeah. And look, here's a little bitty, god dang, dude. We didn't even see this when we were up uh, like a foot higher. There's a little shark tooth yep. guy right there, another little bone. It is insane. What's nuts is when you get down this close, how much stuff you see. Dude, there's so many fossils there here. There's so many fossils. It is insane. And this is just the stuff that's, uh, you know, weathered god. out and destroyed, so. This well, is nuts, man. This is like, so basically what we decided to do is, is we, after we filmed that last shot, we kind of hunkered down. We're like, oh, we're finding this. Oh, we're finding this. Oh, we're finding this. This is so cool. And we wanted to show you guys all what we were finding. This is insane, dude. This is so cool. Mm -hmm. Hey, is that another little? That is another little. Ah, there's his mate right there. <laughs> Look, that's so cool. That's. <laughs> 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 that's hilarious. Hey, Get it away from me. It's not the size of a spine, Chase. <laughs> that's right, dude. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, man. that's so, great. This is, uh, this is oh. really a great spot. And this is one of the spots that helped us discover this locality. Okay. You know, once we identified all these fossils here, and you, we, we knew that this was a place yeah, to dig. Yeah, yeah. You knew that there was such a variety. We were like, all right, we got something serious going on here. Like, look at this. What you got that there? Little, I don't know. What is that? What is that guy? Oh, man. This is looks like part of a limb bone. Okay. Uh, a larger bone. Okay. So we got a bigger Look up limb here. Bone. We got another nice, another nice shark tooth. tooth. Dude, it would be, man, you ought to rig up like <clears throat> some kind of like little like hammock sailing thing that keeps you like a few like, inches off the ground. Honey, I shrunk the kids? Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. Like a little honey, I shrunk the kids. Where are the kids? Like a yep. little hammock thing we going do around. It. Dude, that would, that's the way to go. That's the way to dude, go. Dude, this is so, this is insane how much stuff is once you get close to the ground. This so, is just nuts. Uh, that's. That only represents about a quarter of the species that we find out here pretty okay. commonly. So, how many species do you have out here? I mean, you know, you, you got this in, in this little handful, you know, one, two, three, four, five well, different species. Commonly, we find about a dozen. Okay, so yeah, about different a dozen species. common species. Yeah, but uh, there could be as many as two or three dozen okay. uh, in wow. the more obscure things. And some of the stuff is uh, only, you only find it in microfossils. So, we take this dirt home. We wash it and screen it down uh, sometimes to sub-millimeter. 
No. And we're finding little teeth and claws that are like 0.2 millimeters. No. Yeah, so This man. isn't the small stuff. No, this is not the small stuff. <gasps> That's insane. We're There's talking, stuff smaller than this? It, when you see it on the tip of your finger, it looks like sand. No yes. way. But when you look at it under the microscope, it's a perfect little thing. Dude, that's not, how, 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 did, how did scientists think to look for that in the first place? I, you know, I really don't know, Chase, but you know? I just, it's probably curiosity. Yeah. You know, one of those accidental things where somebody just threw something under a microscope yeah, and said, wow, like, look oh, at this. Crap, there's stuff there. <laughs> see, and that's, you know, that's what's cool is, is that curiosity that drives us, you know, that's, you know, you, you'd be out on a site collecting this stuff and be like, oh, this is the small stuff. This is great. But take Taking it home and looking for, you know, under a microscope to see what's what's down on that microscopic level. That's insane. Dude. Absolutely. That is nuts, man. Here's an interesting piece. This is kind of, uh, yeah. it's got some, uh, some kind of crust on it, but this is a concentration of fossils. And whenever I find this, Chase, I always take it home and drop it in some acetic acid or vinegar. Yeah. And it'll etch off this crust and it'll just be a conglomerate of fossils. No. Yeah, man, it can just be a whole little just cluster of teeth and bones and all sorts of... Like now, a, how did that cluster up to begin with? <clears throat> well, it's just whatever... Is it like the, a copper light or something? Uh, or? It, you know, it could be a copper light. I never considered that as an option. See, there you go. Wow, dude. now I we're mean, thinking. You know, <clears throat> I mean, that could be a copper light, you know, and that's just everything that, that was ate in that because basically what you're saying is, is this is a cluster that, ha that of a rock that's harder than the surrounding rock Correct. that has fossils within it. Yes. Okay, and you take it home and you dissolve it, and yep. there's different species of stuff within that. Absolutely, dude. Yeah. This is this is. I bet you this is copper light. That's what. Yeah. Wow. Dude, that's wow. awesome. So that's you get so a cool. fossil scratch off ticket with each of these copper lights. You just go <laughs> dissolve it. Who knows what you're gonna get? That's awesome. Gotta, Hope gotta you collect. get a claw. Yeah. I'm on the lottery. Yeah, man. God, All right. This is awesome. Well, All right. Well, you want to hop up and check out the? Let's court? do it. Let's do that. All right. All right. Back to your regularly scheduled documentary. Come on. Let's go. This is so. So we're, we're we're poking around here looking for a little, just all this little stuff. So what 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 do you do? What the heck? You got all right, on? Chase. I just found two little cherries. This is one of those xenocanth shark teeth, but it is absolutely perfect, and you can what? really see how bizarre these Look teeth that. were. That thing is gnarly. That's the buck tooth guy. That's the buck tooth guy. That's so cool. <laughs> it's not, it is a little buck tooth shark. Now, do you know when these species went extinct? Uh, these Were guys they all killed in the Permian extinction or yes. earlier? Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, I think some of these sharks survived into the Jurassic. Some okay. of the Xenocanth sharks did. Okay. Yeah, I, I believe they find some of these in the Solnholfen over in Germany. Okay. But uh, it's good that you mentioned that because at the end of the Permian, 98% uh, of life on Earth went extinct. Right, right. So when, when, when we poke, when we get done looking around here, I want to stop and I want to talk to you about the Permian extinction because there's several theories behind it. You know, you know some people think the volcanoes in, in Russia, the, the Siberian eruption, and right. some people think the creation of Pangea. And I just want to get your thoughts on it. So what we'll do is, is when we start to wrap up things, we'll sit down and we'll talk about the Permian extinction. Something to look forward to. Ah, Absolutely. This is cool. All right, let's see what else we can track around and find. So okay, so you've got your. We're up here on your quarry site now. So we we went down and we found the layer. You you came up here. You went in and you kind of flattened this all off and you exposed. This is the colored dirt that we were talking about. This light colored dirt. Absolutely. So what's your next step? I mean, what what, what are we looking at here? So this is the all the clays that were deposited in this uh, wet area. This has been a little oxbow lake okay. or a deep pool in a stream that. Uh, Always held water in it. So we're talking about serious water. Right? Serious water. Okay, all right. Uh, and, and that's evidenced by the abundance of uh, shark teeth okay. and lungfish teeth. Okay. So that's the base of the food chain. So not freshwater shark or saltwater sharks, but fresh fresh water. water sharks. Yeah, this is all way inland way. From, the, from the Permian. And season. the fossils that you're finding in here, this is just stuff that you know would have naturally just fallen in and got covered up and began fossilized. Yes, uh, th that and the animals that were living in here. So some of these animals died of old age and they got pushed to the bottom of this anaerobic muck. Okay. And, uh, and preserved. This got preserved there. Yeah. That's so cool. So, what's your, so when you get up here, you get this cleared off, you hit this layer. What do you do? Do you, do you sift? Do you surface hunt? Do you dig? What's, we, and, 
Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. We, we start with the surface hunting. Yeah. Uh, then we start to dig. But we collect all the matrix <clears throat> from this layer. So what's what now matrix? What do you mean by matrix? So matrix is basically just the dirt. It's it's what the fossils are in. That's what we call the matrix. So like that. Absolutely. That's so a blob of matrix. That's a blob of matrix. Okay. All right. So you collect this. And we collect it and we're gonna take it back to the lab and we're gonna soak it and we're gonna screen all the microfossils out. Oh, no, so you're actually collecting every single bit of dirt and you're gonna screen it and collect all the fossils out of it. Yes, no it's a way. very slow process. It's not a fast process because as you've seen, there's a lot of small fossils here. And if you go fast and you just try to cherry pick, you're gonna miss a lot of the best stuff and likely some of the most important stuff. And, and see, that's what, you know, uh, that's interesting of itself because you know you're not going to come out here and, and or you very rarely would come out here and would dig out and just find a whole skeleton laid right. out. It happens, but not very often. not very often. You know that, that's 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 one thing that when people go to museums and they look and they see these complete skeletons that that a lot of people don't realize is is you know that's very very rarely do you find you go out and you dig and then boom there's a whole skeleton. You know the whole Jurassic Park there's a raptor kind of thing going on. You know that didn't happen. What you guys are doing is is you're collecting bits of fossils from the same species and putting these together, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's what we did with our Demetrodon that came from this quarry. There's bones of, of uh, several individuals here, and uh, we found an associated set of bones, uh, and then we composited uh, that specimen to completeness, so that you skeleton. Found, so you found like an arm and a tail and that section, and then you had all the other bones from other, other, other different animals of that same species and kind of yep. put them all together to make one complete specimen. That's right, yeah. That's so, so cool. All the little spine fragments that we collect and screen out of the matrix. Okay. You know, you take those back and reassemble them painstakingly to the right size and position. All the little individual vertebrae we find, clean them up, figure out where they go in the body, and then start to fill in the holes. Okay. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Man, that's like Dr. Seuss's jigsaw puzzle, yeah. man. When you're, I mean, you're talking about species where, you know, well, what about what about for like you know uh, new species that you come across? I mean, trying to figure out how would you go about figuring out what bones would go where? Well, you know? you know, it's really hard from isolated bones. The only way to to identify a new species like that would be uh, you know a good chunk of skull uh, that would be diagnostic and and some associated postcranial material. So then you can identify okay, this weird little vertebrae that looks slightly different than this one is associated with this different type of skull. And once you know that then you can kind of start to identify things. But uh, most of the stuff here is is common, so you, you can use reference books, right. Dr. Romer's review of the Pelicosaur and things like that. Now, you've brought up Dr. Romer before. Who, who is Dr. Romer? Uh, Alfred Sherwood Romer was a paleontologist uh, with the American Museum, and he was uh, probably one of the pioneers in the Permian out here. Uh, the first Permian fossil was discovered by Joseph Boll, uh, Jacob Bowl, excuse me, in uh, like the late 1800s. Is and, that over uh, in Australia? No, that was or, here. Oh, that was, that here? was here. Okay, okay. That was here in Archer County. The first Permian fossil was found here in Archer County. Dude, okay, so wait a minute. So in the late 1800s, like the same time you got cowboys running around herding Indians. Doing the, and, and Indians and everything, you've got guys out here hunting fossils. Yeah, so there were Comanche God, scalps. Cool. There were There were Comanche scalping people and people crawling around looking for fossils. No joke. Yeah. Dude, that's insane. That's nuts, yeah. man. So it goes back that far. That far, yeah. So Bull's discovery, uh, you know, kind of created some buzz, and then people started looking. Cope came out here. Yeah, he and, was the famous dinosaur right. explorer. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, Cope came out here, and then uh, Dr. Romer came out here. Dr. Romer spent uh, over 45 years wow. collecting in, in Archer County and Baylor County in the Texas Red Beds. Wow. So, so as far as Texas goes, and really the United States, as far as the Permian period goes, this is this is it. This is the mecca for the entire world for Permian fossils. Whoa! So okay, so not just Texas and the U.S., but for Permians, for what we're collecting. Yes. You know this this what is it a 70, 80 million year time span? Uh, yeah, two hundred fifty to what is it two three hundred million yeah. years? That that range right there. Yes. For the entire planet, that is insane. Where we're sitting, this layer right here, this. This is the heart of fossils from the time before the dinosaur. Absolutely. Dude, that's so cool, yeah. man. That is insane. You know, there's Permian fossils in other places, Madagascar, Germany, South Africa, South America. But um, the representation of Permian fossils uh, in museums around the world is made by skeletons and specimens 
from Archer County. No from North joke, Texas. dude. Yeah. That's so cool. That's insane when you think about it. That that here we are sitting. You've got this, you know, fifty million year, seventy five million year t- span of time that's pre dinosaurs. It represents the very first, you know, uh, ecosystem that was created on Earth where the critters got out. These mammal like reptiles. This hugely important period of history. And dude, we're sitting on the heart of it for the entire planet. For the entire dude, planet. that's so cool, man. <laughs> That's insane. That's awesome, yeah. dude. And we're picking it up. And we're picking it dude, up. Dude, that's yeah. so cool, man. We're, we're saving it from the forces of erosion. God. Well, and that's what makes it so important. Because, I mean, this Archer County in this area, this, I mean, it, it may be one small spot on the planet, but this is a big area. It is a big area. And there's not a whole lot of a lot of people out here collecting this stuff. No, there's not. Uh, there's, there's not a whole lot of people anymore. Um, the heyday was really in the 20s and 30s and 40s. Um, there was a lot of people out here collecting and digging. Over in neighbor Baylor, uh, in neighboring Baylor County, is the biggest fence under one ranch in the United States, the Wagner Ranch. Wow. And there's a lot of famous fossils that have come off the Wagner Ranch as well. Um, but nowadays, in 2018, there's uh, just a handful of people that are out here collecting wow. these fossils, which means more are being uncovered, weathered out, and destroyed. Without, right. without anyone ever knowing. And see, that to me, that's the crime, dude. This is why we need more people like you and maybe people like you Absolutely. to get out here and to collect this stuff because, you know, this stuff is just like we saw on the side of the hill down down there. That stuff is eroding out of the bank and it's turning back, it's, it's being exposed, it's disarticulating and it's turning back into dirt. And that's what we don't want because, you know, we can't really learn much about fossil life from the dirt. I mean, you can under certain circumstances Circumstances, but not for not for the complexities of life. You can't learn by just looking at at, at when it turned back in. Right. You need the fossils. You need the fossils. So, dude, what you do is is one. It's freaking awesome, dude. It's so cool. Where we're at is gnarly, insane. That yeah. is nuts. And what what we're doing here. I mean, this is this is hugely important for science. Yeah. You know, because I mean, you're having the opportunity to find new species and to preserve pieces. You know, for 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 everyone to enjoy. And to, and, and, and to learn from. And to me, that's 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 hugely important. That, sir, is a noble profession. Well, and, dude, I dig it, man. This is awesome. Thanks. That's cool. All right, well, let's go look around and see if we can't find some stuff. All right, you guys want to go? I know you want to go. Let's oh, go. wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Look, look at this chase right here. Oh, no. You know what I was telling you about? Oh, dude, that's you, insane. You know what that is? That's that little claw. That thing. is a Demetrodon claw. No. <laughs> Did you spot that before? No, I didn't. I just, nope, I literally just, just saw it. Yeah. God, that's so cool. Oh, man, this is nuts. Let's get up here. You guys can look at that. Look at that. No way. Dude, that's nuts. Yeah. All right, so tell us about this species. What do we got going on right here? Okay, so Dimetrodon, or Dimetrodon, was the uh, mammal like reptile. And uh, it was a guy with a sail on his back. But he was kind of, uh, in, in the later Permian... Okay, this is the sail dude. This is the sail This back. is the yeah. sail dude, okay. So, in the later Permian, God, this God. Demetrodon, uh, they, the Demetrodons rise to the top of the food chain. They become the apex predator, the T-Rex of the Permian. Right, they got the big claws, the bad teeth, and uh, but this is this is to the Milleri. This is the much smaller species that would have okay. been, you know, lunch for the bigger amphibian Edops. God, it's so nuts, man. Yeah. Now that species, it had its sail on its back. You know, you don't see, you know, anything really alive today that's got a sail on its back. What the heck was the purpose of that? Well, I mean, there's a couple of theories. Mm-hmm. One that it was for uh, thermal regulation. I've know, heard that. Yeah. Like sunning themselves to yeah. regulate body temperature or cool themselves off and then there's other people that speculate that maybe it was used for sexual displays really? so i mean hey sharks have weird little peckers on the head so <laughs> maybe uh maybe they're onto something <laughs> it was a crazy time in the Permian, it was a crazy man. time yeah that's right oh that's so. hilarious dude this is so freaking cool man oh nice dude that is awesome yeah all right let's go let's go find some more stuff all right god this is cool complete skull just like that weather just now. Just monsters. So here's what we were doing, guys. We were walking around and, and looking, and, and we noticed we've got this this little patch right here. The colors, 
you know, a little different. You've got some bone pieces sticking out here. Now, now this surface right here, this, what, what, what surface is this? This is the surface of the layer that we want? Exactly. This is the top of the, of the deposit that was made in this little oxbow lake or okay. wet, wetland area. All right. It's, it's that, it's not red. It's not, it's the purple. It's the purple. This yeah. is the purple stuff. So what, what do we've got going on right here? Well, this looks like, uh, that's definitely some skull material. Okay. And, uh, looks like there's some associated bone over here. Okay. Over here, all the way down to here. And there's a little, looks like maybe a toe bone right there. Okay. So I would collect, I would dig around this and collect the whole thing because you could have a semi-articulated skull or a little bit of a, an associated skeleton. Okay, right so this is this is what you're talking about when you when you've got something you see a thing like this. When yeah. you've got a, the possibility of an entire or partial animal right here instead of these little pieces that we were picking up. This is in the layer that hasn't been disturbed, that hasn't weathered out, that hasn't you know turned back to dirt. It's just now starting to come out, and so this. God, this could be a yeah. whole one, yeah, it dude. Could be. It could That's be. That's insane. Yeah. So, what would you do? What What's your next step now? Now that you found this, you're gonna cut around it, make a little block, take some aluminum yep. foil. Uh, I've got a little bit of super glue in my bag, so okay. I just squirt that on top of this dirt right here. Now that super glue is not gonna hurt. No, it won't, it won't hurt it at all. Okay. I mean, you can take it off with air abrasion, or you can you can thin it down and take it off with acetone. Okay, cool. So it's it, it's totally reversible. Um, and then I would dig a, a trench around it, kind of see if there's any bones extending out that we can't see under the dirt. Okay. And then I would take this whole patch back to a, to a, a lab situation or back my to house, your, you know, workbench. Yeah. And, uh, and I'd work on it with, you know, little scribes and picks and stuff and just start cleaning it up. Okay. Oh, it's so yeah. cool, dude. Good That's find. awesome, man. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> cool. Well, let's do this. You, you mind if I dig around no, it and go do ahead. the super glue and everything and then yeah. give it to you and, and you can do with it as you please. Sure, that sounds great. All right, cool, because I'd like to show those guys up there you know, how you would go about digging out something like this, the steps you would go to save it and and and, and all that. Sounds good. Cool. Ah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! It's awesome, man. All right, so we got our supplies out now. Now, what, what, what's an important lesson we learned today? Well, the lesson of the day is check your supplies before you go into the field. Uh, it appears that my glue leaked out into my bag, uh, causing all sorts of other problems. But the, the, the biggest one at the moment is we don't have any glue. Uh, but I do have some aluminum foil, so right. we're halfway there. All right, so, so what are we going to do? So we're going we're gonna to peck around. How, how would you go about doing this? So, um, you know, it's always better to be you know, very conservative. So we're gonna say this thing is this big. Let's start digging out here. Okay. And we're just gonna poke around and if we see any bone, we're gonna stop and we're gonna expand our area. Okay. But we'll just work our way in from this outside, uh, from this outside channel. Okay, all right. So yeah. you see that good, rich green clay right under the surface? Right. That's indicative of that, of that layer that we're looking okay. for. I mean, that's, that's the stuff. That's what you want. Yep. Okay. Oh, and there's some of that real rich purple. Okay. So we're digging around. What's we got little stuff? What's this kind of stuff we got going on? Okay. Right here? So that look, that's one of those Edops uh, armor scoops. Okay. So that so different species. D right? Different species. Yeah. Okay. I don't think that's associated. But right. this so that's one of those little Edops scoops. So different species. Now this is really rich, so it, you will see other fossils in here okay. as we're digging. All right. I mean, there's. Now, when you get going through, how, how would you differentiate between uh, what is this animal and what is like what we saw there? I would say bones leading into it. Okay. You know, so anything extending out, like roots from a tree. You know, okay. They, oh, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So, because I see some little fragments in here, but I don't feel like that's associated like that's at part all. Part of it. Yeah. Okay. Now, how often do you come out and you find stuff like this? Um, just that. about every time it rains okay. at this particular site, being as rich as it is. Okay, so you'll at least come along and you'll find at least one thing that's 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 that could be articulated like this. Right. Okay. Cool. Uh, but that's very unusual for the Permian. Oh, articulated stuff. Yes. Okay. Why is that? Uh, it's just. You know, it's so old and there's been so much geological uh, disturbances. Right. A lot of these formations are faulted and folded and moved and eroded away and redeposited. Right. So, uh, you know, good undisturbed uh, 
places in a formation are, are hard to find. Right. Because, you know, the, 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 the earth as it was, you know, in, in the Permian period, you know, it still had a whole lot of changes to go through. Oh, I mean, you know, you had Pangea hadn't formed yet. You know, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that hadn't happened yes. yet. So, I mean, these this here's what, that's what's so cool about this is this thing died late on the dirt. And then literally the continents moved a lot, slammed into each other, created mountain ranges, then pulled back apart. Yep. And so for this, that one little guy to stay in its one little spot the whole time, I mean, it's really, it's like a, it's like a lottery on a lottery on a lottery, you know, it's, it's bigger than the megabucks. Yes. And then, to, and then to be weathering out perfectly on the surface, you just see in the first indication of it. Right. That's, that's great. Now here's a little bone right there. Could that be hmm. part of this? guy it was right there yeah okay let's see here no i don't think so chase i think that's just okay. you know kind of like what i'm seeing over here is a lot of little fragments okay just a lot of little yeah fragments. okay i'll come back and uh, i'll stockpile all this matrix this dirt and i'll put it in a pile so we can screen that later okay so you'll save all this stuff around it also yeah. I was thinking, oh, this will be easy. Yeah, we'll just go, you know, dig a little around it, and it'll be, you know, in two minutes. I didn't realize how hard this dirt it's is. It's all right. Let's see what I've got. See, this clay is hard, but that's good. It's going to work in our favor in a minute. When I put that shovel underneath here, hopefully it'll stay together in a, in, in a okay, big chunk. Okay, a big, big yeah. chunk. pretty good now like we just did with that piece let's just kind of pull these off the side and check and see, see if we got any other if we got any other fossils in there okay and uh holy crap what you got well all kinds of stuff <laughs> um, this appears to be a little catch-all i mean there is just bone all in here Okay. It's all different species, so it's okay. not associated to one thing. Okay. I think we're safe in taking this out in chunks. Okay. And I'm definitely going to bag all this up. Okay, so this is something you'd bag up and you'd take back to your lab and you would go through it and and sift it all out and separate each individual piece and see what's all there. So there could be anything in here from shark's tooth to claws to wrist bones to vertebrae, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. But, yeah. We got Demetrodon spine, we got little... Uh, shark teeth. We got some amphibian bones. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff in here. So See, th this, to me, sounds like this would be just an awesome, awesome little pocket to have because I mean, it's you don't know what you're gonna get. No, you, know? you really don't. Yeah. No, this is very unique. So this is what's neat is, as we were going in, we thought this was just, you know, possibly an articular, or, you know, part of a skull section or whatever. We got going down, we discovered it was something totally different, but that was even better. Well, that's you that's know? how it goes in the Permian. That's I mean, so cool. You can have one assumption on top and you get down through it and you're like, holy crap, this is a pocket that's a, a catch-all. Holy all. crap, look, look, this just rolled out. No, look whoa! At this, look at this toe bone. Holy I mean, that, cow, that's awesome. that is fantastic. So that's what you're gonna find in this pocket is you're gonna find just a bunch of different, just, dude, that is nuts. That's yeah. so cool, man, look at that. That is gnarly. Oh, that's so freaking cool, yeah, dude. There's no, t I mean, this is just absolutely God. loaded with bone. You know, that's rib nuts. section. That's so cool, dude. So nice find, Chase. <laughs> no, man. Hey, this is this is, this is your stuff, dude. I'm, I'm I'm on your spot, man. I'm just I'm just out hunting for you, dude. This is awesome, man. God, this is cool. Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So we're gonna take it. And we're gonna get it wrapped up in the aluminum foil yep. or bagged up. Okay. So we'll. I'm gonna put it straight on it. Yeah. Okay. See this chunk right here has clearly got some bone in it. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this piece up separately. Okay. Do that. Yep. Now, why use aluminum foil instead of something like paper or anything else? Well, aluminum foil really adds a little bit of um, a little bit of cushion, and you're okay. able to uh, wrap it tightly around things so they don't move around. Okay. Now, if something's fractured up, you want something that's really going to hold it together. Okay. And in some cases, you don't want to use an adhesive. So, aluminum foil serves the same purpose. Right. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. So, especially Chase, on the roads you got going in and coming out of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All 
I'm just going to kind of take a shovel load okay. and just set it right on okay. this foil. Wow, it's just loaded with bone. God, it's that. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that. Whoa, what is that? That is an inner centrum to a giant amphibian. This is the EDOPS. Now, what's an inner centrum? What, so, what, what, what okay. So, let's, uh, if we had a big spine top, the yeah. process, uh, this would be the very bottom of the vertebrae, like this. Oh, And okay. then there's other pieces that connect the circle. Yeah. And then there's the process and the new spine top. So, these giant amphibians' vertebrae, were made up of uh, several different pieces. That's cool. Dude, there's like a whole cool little catch-all in here. Oh man, I this mean there's the end nuts. of a limb bone. Look at this. Yeah. God, look at look at this. Dude, check, look at all this stuff. That is so freaking nuts, man. Dude, that's insane. Yeah. It's just chocker block full of just full. Dude, this Absolutely is nuts full. awesome. That's cool. And you don't see it extending very far no, in any direction. Very so, localized to this one so, little pocket. So, okay, so, all right, so that's, that's, God, that's so nuts, dude. Okay, so what we had, you know, we had this watery area. Yeah. And then this could have either been like, like a little bed or something like that, you know, a nest or whatever, yeah. you know, uh, just a little hole or depression. Over the, over the millions of years, stuff rolled into this little pocket that's only this big. You know, the freaking continents moved, they clashed together and then moved again. Yeah. You know, cowboys and Indians were out here running around. And then we come out here and we've got all this fossil stuff right here in this one little pocket dude that's like that's like winning the lottery's lottery yeah, it is that's nuts this dude is... that's so god i told you this would be cool <laughs> dude this is awesome man all right sweet all right so what we're so what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this up with more foil right or... yeah we'll wrap this up we'll probably pull this chunk out and put it in its own separate okay piece. we'll take that guy out wrap that in its own all right like the coolest Christmas wrapping yeah. ever. And let's <laughs> lift this okay. side up and we'll kind of double up on it on this side. Okay. Alright. Okay. Kind of slide this over a little bit. Perfect. Okay. Wrap it up like a brisket. <laughs> okay. And we'll put one more to close at the top gonna be a good brisket yeah it's settled for 300 million years you're gonna love it it's gonna be great gonna be we put potatoes with it it's <laughs> just excellent perfect and we stick that in the oven and dinosaurs will come out you just wait and see god this that's all right that's Chase. cool that's dude. awesome all right we got more to find so just ah, keep watching Woohoo! this is cool Okay, now now you've got we've got herbivores and we've got carnivores in this in this area. You know what what what, what did they look like? What did they do? How do they fit their environments? What, what do we got going on? Well, we've talked a lot about Demetrodon, which had the sail on right. his back. He's a meat eater. He was a meat eater. He was a meat eater. Yeah, okay. and uh, I've I mentioned the Adaphosaurus. Right. Okay, so we found here finally one of the pieces of Adaphosaurus, and this is a section of spine. And the adaphosaur is, uh, it's identifiable by these little nodes, these little bumps that stick off the side of the spine. Okay, so the spine would go... The spine like, would go up and down, okay. you know, it would go straight up and down, like, let's just imagine this little piece of grass was a spine. Okay. Okay, and it would go down to his backbone, and, uh, and it would just be covered with these little offset uh, bumps all the way up each of his spines, okay. really making for something... God, that's wild looking. Yeah, it's yeah. totally wild, you know. Now... Now, what was this guy? So, what, what what's his deal? So, Edaphosaurus was a vegetarian Demetrodon, basically. They're the same thing. They're no. pelicosaurs. They're okay. synapsids. You know, they're mammal-like yeah. reptiles. Got the sail. It got the sail on their sail back. dudes. They look eat. the same. Their hands look the same. Uh, the only difference is uh, Edaphosaurus took a different path and foraged plants on land, which were abundant ferns really? and things like that. Now, now, okay, evolutionary, how would that happen? How would you have two species that are pretty much identical, except for these little things, and how could one of them evolve to eat plants and one of them evolve to eat meat? You know, that's a really interesting question. It would really be uh, maybe some environmental uh, 
environmental pressures or something like yeah. that you know if there's not as many prey animals but abundant plants you know yeah. something's going to start to adapt to eat more plants now what's fascinating is is that they li they lived together at the same period of time they did live together at the same God, period it's of nuts, time it's nuts man yeah what if we, you know you were talking about how, how the permians you know it's kind of a kind of a, a wild little age you know how how would they know the difference between each other when it came time to make more little you know dimitri tons gosh you know that that'd be a <laughs> it's the nodes it's man. the nodes it's the nodes yeah. The nodes knows. The nodes yeah. knows. Yeah, so the other interesting thing and diagnostic feature of an adaphosaur is going to be their mm -hmm. heads. I mean, you see these, um, think of a, like a stegosaurus, you know, that's an yeah. iconic animal. Huge dinosaur. Yeah. Uh, with this crazy armor on his back, but he was a plant eater and he had this tiny little head. Same thing goes for Adaphosaurus. Huh. They had a tiny little head relative to the side of their, size of their body, whereas Demetrodon is almost the exact opposite. Their heads are oversized for their, their bodies. bodies. Yeah. Oh, that's wild. So there you that's go. That's cool. That's God, I can't believe how many species we're finding out here, dude. That is insane, yeah. man. Hey, look at this, Chase. What do you got here? Right here is a. We're just rolled out of here a little Archeria vertebrae. Oh, that's it's another sweet. one of those amphibian verts. Now this guy's he's the first what the one of the first amphibians. Yep. Okay. Holy cow! That's like the first. The first, one of the first amphibians. One of the first amphibians. God, that's insane. That's so cool. And here we are. They're just, Dude, you know, nuts. new fossils weathering out yeah. every day. Now, now, I, well, here's what's when you look at this one. Look at how chewed up and, and I mean, this is this is nature doing it. It's turning it back into dirt. Absolutely, yeah. You know, if you come in and take a look at this, guys, see what we we're talking about about how it's turning back into dirt, and you got this little guy. See how clean and fresh this guy is and see how this one's getting weathered and this one's nice and clean see this what happened into this 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 fossilized because this was harder than the surrounding rock and what's happening is is that now that it's exposed to the to the heat the cold the rain the wind everything this is turning back into the dirt that surrounds it so that's why it's important to come out here and to collect this stuff because you know what do you think another 10 years that there wouldn't be nothing left of that that's right yeah you know, if that and with the cows walking cows, around. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you got cows walking around, tromping on everything, yeah. you know. God, that's, that is so cool, Yeah, dude. so we're going to keep right. hunting. We'll Let's probably find hunting. some more discoveries. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, so what we want to do, we had to come back to the van, catch a bit of water, relax a little bit. It is hot out here, but apparently we're out here on a cool day. So, but we wanted to... Sh lay everything out and talk about what some of the species and the diversity that we got here what we found so what, what look we got all this massive just broken bone what, what are we looking at here dude all right chase well we we got just about every species that's represented here no uh, seriously uh i think so we came really close dude, we got the sharks nuts. we got the amphibians we got the reptiles so um i'll start over here this is part of an ulna okay. of an of an amphibian uh, so this would probably be uh, a big Eriops ulna, and that's going to be a an arm bone. Okay. This is part of a rib to an Eriops. Okay. So this is really cool. This is a bone that you don't commonly find because reptile of, fish. Uh, this is this is an amphibian. Okay. Um, they, uh, this is usually the first part of the carcass that gets scavenged. You know, so okay. everything eats the entrails and the ribs out first. Right. Uh, and we've got two little toes here. I wanted to show the difference in these. This is an amphibian toe, and you can tell that be, by, because it's very squat, very broad. And these are, um, this is also an amphibian toe. It's very uh, flat on the ends like that. Flat, that would have been a lot of cartilage in there. Mm -hmm. This is a reptile toe. This is Demetrodon. And we can tell that because it's got this figure eight shape and it's really kind of bony looking on the end, whereas this would have had a lot more cartilage in there. Yeah. Uh, man, we've got, uh, this is an Adaphosaur vertebrae. Now, what do those guys look like? Adaphosaur. Dawn, these guys, that's the sail dude. Right. right. So it's the vegetarian cousin of the Dimetrodon. Okay. Yep. Did it have a sail too? It did also have a sail. There's a lot of species in this period that had sails. They did. Yeah. <laughs> They were they were uh, trendsetters. Yeah, there you go. All right. Um, so so that got, so that's what's that species again? Adaphosaurus. Adaphosaurus. Okay. Yeah. Then we've got that crazy buck tooth shark. Buck the tooth shark. The and, xenocanth. And so and that's the buck teeth. Yep. Okay. That is a whole tooth. <laughs> that is a whole tooth. That's hilarious. So much like modern <laughs> sharks, these would have had a mouthful of these. 
and they kept spitting them out? Yes, okay. absolutely. That's uh, cool. If you can imagine a, how you close your mouth with teeth like that. I know, no <laughs> joke, man. That's hilarious. Oh my gosh, here is a lungfish tooth. This is uh, this is really nice. Lungfish, can, you know, they came about in the Permian, and they are still around today. So this is one of those survivor species that's just, you know, it's built to last. That's so cool. Yeah. So we've got a species here that's still alive today. Yep. And this is its ancestors, 250, 60, mm -hmm. 70 million years old. Yeah, that's right. Now, do you know the specific date for your site? This site is about 299 to 300. So okay. this is right really at the start. Old. Right yeah. at the start. Okay. And that's why kind of everything's so small. Yeah. Uh, we have the the base um, species of a lot of these. You know, this okay. is where the genus starts, and then the species kind of branch out. Okay. From here. So this is early Permian, and that's just so nuts. Here's a t this is a tooth from a guy that's still around today. Yes. That's insane. That's so cool. Right. So we got some larger uh, amphibian bones here, and I wanted to show you. This is a wrist bone. It would have gone up here. And uh, this is one of the toe bone or one of the finger bones. So if you can, as you can see, that would have been a very large animal. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. What species would that? Have been? Uh, this is probably Eriops. Okay. Eriops would be like a modern day salamander, except you know, stretch them out about six, seven feet long. Ah, that's nuts. Man. Yeah. So. Cool. Uh, we've got some hematite. This is really common out here in the uh, in the Permian. You know what's interesting about hematite is, is you know this was stuff that was collected by the Native Americans. They would make tools. They would incorporate it into their into their paint. Yeah. Uh, you know uh, th this is a really neat material to it find out here. Material. I couldn't believe there was hematite hematite out here. This stuff would get traded as far east as where we're from in Tennessee. Wow. You know which is which is wild. That is wild. So we've got another Eriops rib here, and uh, you can tell by these deep grooves here. That's that's very indicative. So that's not weathering that's done that? No, that's not weathering. So there. that's what the rib actually looks like. It's got these deep grooves in yeah. it going on. Now, would that be for muscle attachment? It or? would have had a, a large cartilage uh, cartilage fin around it. So oh, okay. It would have been like a spatula. Imagine like a spatula. Yeah, So yeah. that's the handle of the spatula, and the cartilage would have been the, the actual spatula okay. part. Cool. Uh, we've got a nice little Eriops jaw section here. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see there's the outside texture, and this is the top of the jaw where the teeth go in. Oh, I'm sorry, I had it upside down. This is where the teeth uh, would go in. There's a good empty socket right there. Oh, that's not So that's the tooth socket. That is the tooth that's socket. That's cool. So this, so there's the top of the jaw, and it would have bit down like that. Yep. That's so cool, dude. Yeah. That's nuts, man. That's awesome. So that's here awesome. you got an absolutely pr primo Eriops fang. Okay, so that's this guy. Yep. All right. So his jaw would have closed down here, and his fang would have come down in front like that. Right. Absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So, I mean, that's just a gorgeous tooth. I mean, that's that's everything you want in a nice tooth right there. It's that's beautiful so color cool, and man. preservation. We got the Edops. Yeah. You know, we talked about the Edops armor yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. That's really neat. Another uh, Archeria claw. Okay, so that's another little... Another little claw. Another little amphibian. Little amphibian claw. Mm -hmm. God, it's so cool. And that's just a primo piece too. Yeah. Perfect preservation. This is actually a neural spine, a spine top that would go on a vertebrae. This is this is a different animal altogether, but it goes on top like that. Okay. Uh, but this goes to an amphibian, probably Eriops. Okay. Yep. Uh, we got some more lungfish teeth, rib sections. This is Demetrodon. Demetrodon ribs and a daphosaur are, are rounded like that. They're uh -huh. more uh, robust, you know, they, they hold up a little bit better. Uh, Dude, this is a killer pile of stuff. This is insane, man. I can't believe we found and and just just so you guys know, this is our, our, our cameraman Chris's pile, and this is my pile. And Chris is by far the better collector than than I am, that's for sure. He's he's got some cool he's got found some great stuff. Dude, this is that is so cool. This, this is, is such great. an awesome this diversity, is an awesome man. Day. Yeah. Well cool. Well let's get some water, let's get hydrated back up, and let's go back up and let's do let's go hunt for some more stuff. All right. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, you're Let's go. You know what's incredible is is you know you talk about the Permian is is it's just this one little blip of history in amongst a lot of little blips of history. Yes. I mean you know you're talking like you know this thing lasted from from 290 to 251 million years. That's it. 
you know, this is the very first period that, you know, life came out of the ocean and started screwing around on land, you know, all these crazy traits and everything. And then all of a sudden, you've got the largest extinction that the planet has ever seen at the end of this period. What happened? Yeah, so it's called the Great Dying, and during the Great Dying, uh, like 98% of, of life on Earth died in the lands, uh, on, on land and in the oceans. And the, the die-off was primarily in the oceans. Right. So fishes and corals and all sorts of things like that. So you've got, you know, you've got life flourishing for the first time on land and in the sea, and then all of a sudden, at the end of it, you just, 98% of life, that is an insane amount of time. Yeah. You know, that's what's, I mean, that's, God, it's, it's, it's It makes incredible. the uh, extinction of the dinosaurs look like a scratched knee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like, our, so compared to the dinosaurs, you know, when the dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago, how many species compared to, you know, when the dinosaurs died, compared to when spe life died in this period? Uh, it was really just the, just the dinosaurs and, and a, a, some life in the sea, all the large marine reptiles, ammonites and things like that. But to compare the two, I mean, it would be half or less. Wow. Yeah. God, that's insane, yeah. man. So uh, what species out of this period made it to the dinosaur era? Well, there were some of the reptiles that made it through who became the archosaurs of the Triassic period. So the okay. phytosaurs and the crocodilians. Okay. Yeah, so some of those reptiles were able to scratch out a living and hold on, and they eventually gave rise to the dinosaurs. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah. So so, the, so, some of the species of what we've, we've been able to collect and bag and find here made it on through. And one of those species, like the crocodiles, yeah. made it all the way through to today. All the way to today. That's what's nuts is, is yeah. we're here, we're digging, you know, 200, 70 million year old fossils and one of these species is still alive to this day that's insane yeah you know and then you've got these great events this mass extinction you know what what is it about the earth that causes you know all of these species to die off like that you well, know, what are the, the theories that are going on well one of the theories because of the uh, disproportionate amount of life in the ocean that died was that acidification of the of the oceans there was something that happened that turned the seas acidic and it started to kill everything oh. uh, which then changed the atmosphere and changed the weather drastically but uh, also would have led to a collapse of the base of the food chain right so without the little things for the bigger things to eat you yeah. know everything just starts to uh, collapse in on itself and see that's hugely important you know you wouldn't think that some little small animal you know in the ocean would matter like we've got plankton today you know but if something like that goes that disrupts the entire food chain of what we've got going on because it's like a scale something eats a little thing and then something eats that little thing and something bigger eats that little thing and it just goes all the way up through now i heard that uh that that, that was one of the, the the acidification of the rivers and then also the uh uh in siberia at this time we've got huge volcanic eruptions yes. going on in siberia and that also affected and changed the climate as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure there's many factors, but that could have led to global climate change, uh, you know, very rapidly uh, right. by changing the atmosphere and stuff like that. So. And see, that's something that's important to, to remember. You know, it's not just us that's alive here on this planet. You know, I mean, this the planet itself is a living engine, and it determines our fate. That's kind of a scary thing when it you is. think about it, you know. That's, that's insane. And there are periods of time when, you know, uh, something simple or something small happens, like volcanoes erupting in, in, in Siberia, or you've got the acidity of the oceans changing, or even continental drift. Yeah. You know, right at the end of this period, you know, all the continents come together and make one giant supercontinent, Pangea, Pangea, that the dinosaurs flourished on. So the earth that we, that you are sitting on is alive yeah. and it affects every living thing on this planet. So it's important that we take care of it, you know? Absolutely. And, and it's, it's, it's incredible to be able to come out here and, and to do this and to look at all, all of these fossils that are, that are still out for us to find that made that entire course of stretch of history up to where we are today. Yeah. So, so tell me, dude. So, how long have you been doing this? When did you get started? Man, like I said earlier, you know, I got into fossils when I was four years old, but I've been doing this, you know, seriously uh, for about twelve years, and uh, quit my job in environmental consulting two and a half years ago to pursue this full time. So that's all. Awesome. This is my job. That's, this is my office. This, this is what you do, one hundred percent full time and 100%. for a living. Is you dig fossils? Yes, yeah, that's right. God, it's so cool, yeah. dude. That is awesome. 
So what, what what kind of a business have you gotten started up? How are well, you able to pay the bills? What, uh, do you, what do you do? Well, I started a business called Paleotex with some partners, and we're a full-service paleontological company. So we offer services from uh, preparing fossils for private customers, for museums. Uh, we do consulting, exhibit design. We yeah. recently just delivered some exhibits to a museum in Keene, Texas. So we provide professional services to the academic community. Uh, and we also dig and uh, sell fossils to the community, you know, to the general public for, uh, and we use them for educational purposes. So any facet of paleontology that you can think of, um, we, we do it and we offer that as a service. So any, any kind of service that anybody needs, whether it's fossil prep, museum design, yep. fossil collection and sale, you do it all. Absolutely. See, that's just so cool. And you've been able to cut out, you, you've been able to make a living doing this. Yeah, yeah, make a living doing this. See, so. that's, what's, that's what's cool is you can do this. You Absolutely. can do this, all right? You can come out and you can make a living doing what you love, digging fossils. It's possible. All you've got to do is to go and do it. There are people out there alive that do this. So tell, tell people how they can, you know, if anybody's got any questions or may need any of your help, how, how can people get a hold of you? Sure, you can reach us at uh, Paleotex LLC at yahoo.com or find us on Facebook, Paleotex. And uh, you can reach me at 972-974-6306 if you just want to give me a call. Also, we are opening a brand new museum in Hillsborough, Texas called Texas Through Time. It's going to be focused on the unique fossils of Texas and uh, all the stuff that's underrepresented uh, around the world. So that museum's at 110 North Waco Street in Hillsborough, Texas. And we're, our grand opening is June 22nd. Dude, so that's so coming up, man. Yeah. See, and that's what's cool is, is you've got a museum that's going to talk about this incredible history that there's nowhere else on the planet that you can go and find this array of fossils. Right. You know, that's, right. that's awesome. So if you're in the, in the Texas area, you definitely need to swing by and make a check. Come check it. us out. So, God, I mean, God, thank you very much yeah. for having for having all of us yes. and taking us out here onto the site, showing us about this period of history. This God is so cool, dude. If you'd like to come dig in the Permian, uh, shoot us an email, and I'd be happy to put together a trip out into the red dirt for you. See, you can do this. You, That's the guy. That guy right there. Just call him up. We'll go. And we'll go, dude. That's so awesome. You can keep up with us on our YouTube channel, Chasing History. You can follow us on Facebook, Chasing History and Smoky Mountain Relic Room, or you can come into our shops in Sevierville, Tennessee, inside of Smoky Mountain Knife Works, Smoky Mountain Relic Room. So, dude, thank you so much Thanks, for having Chase. us. Remember, how do you know where you're going unless you know where you've been? It's in studying and understanding the mistakes of the past that prevent the failures of the future. So, keep us in mind, man. God, woohoo! Right. History rocks. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! I don't. Oh my god. Really? Yes, it's sir. those people that speak really low and they smack their lips and they they wrinkle stuff and people get online and they listen to it and they just go, ah, oh, I love the sound. It is the creepiest Ugh. shit in the world. No, no, I'm not doing but that. There are millions of no. dudes doing it. Ooh, ooh. It's like Hello, welcome back to ASMR.